there is a very famous statement called pressure at a point is same in all directions we say this uh, this statement is called as pascal's law but pascal's law is a little different from this statement we will see about pascal's law in the next video but first uh, we need to understand pressure at a point is same in all directions here this pressure at a point pressure will be same in all directions only at a point and not on the uh, not on any plane surface so pressure will be same at only one point if i say there is some fluid and if there is any particle here what i mean the pressure is same in all directions at a point is this is a point and pressure will be same in all directions and now if i consider any surface in this liquid this is the surface i consider if i look at pressure acting here on the top side and on the bottom side the pressure will be more and from the left side the pressure distribution will be increasing towards the down side so this is the plane surface and uh, this is the point so pressure at a point is same in all directions but pressure on a plane surface is not same in all directions unless it is a horizontal surface so let us uh, see how can we conclude that pressure at a point is same in all directions let us consider this surface uh, consider a small uh, fluid element which is in rectangular shape rectangular cross section and uh, let us say this is delta x this is a small fluid element so this is delta z and let us say this is l so there will be pressures acting from all sides so on the surface perpendicular to the surface and from down side all this pressure will be acting let us say this is p1 this is p2 and this is p3 and also there will be weight of the fluid element acting downwards i'll draw this figure in 2d and and this width is let us say this is b or you can take it as unit width so if i draw it again in 2d here this is p1 here this is p3 here this is p2 so what will be, pressure is equal to force by area what is the force then force is equal to pressure into area so here what is this force this force is p1 into uh, delta z into b this is the area and uh, what is here p3 into the uh, area is this area so it is l into b is the area l into b so the resisting uh, the area of a p2 is p2's area is this and that area is delta x into b is the area and there is weight acting downwards this is w so we can balance these forces you should remember that we should not balance the pressures we should balance the forces so that wise uh, we are multiplying this pressure with area any time you should not balance with the uh, pressures we should only balance the forces 
and now so this is x direction this is z direction and this is y direction so sigma fx is equal to 0 for equilibrium so uh, here the x direction forces are p1 into delta z into v this is the positive x direction and uh, due to this pb p3 into p3 into lb there will be horizontal and vertical components if this is theta uh, this will be p3 into lb and this will also be theta cos theta and this is p3 lb sin theta so this is in uh, x direction but explain uh, but uh, this is uh, in the opposite direction so minus p3 lb sin theta is equal to 0 so p1 into delta z into b is equal to p3 into lb sin theta so b b gets cancelled and uh, p1 if uh, l goes to lhs delta z by l is equal to p3 into sin theta so delta z by l is delta z by l is equal to sin theta since this is theta delta z divided by uh, sorry here delta z divided by l gives us sin theta so p1 sin theta is equal to p3 sin theta sin theta sin theta gets cancelled and p1 is equal to p3 and we have found that p1 is equal to p3 and we need to find the relation between this uh, p2 and p3 so let us say sigma fy sigma fy is equal to 0 summation of uh, y force uh, sorry sigma here it is fz is equal to 0 in z direction forces will be uh, 0 summation of forces will be 0 so here in the direction of z p2 into delta x into v this this force is uh, p2 into delta x into v and uh, there is another force of this component here this one this it is in the negative z direction so p3 into lb cos theta and there is another force which is weight acting in downward direction so this will be minus w is equal to 0 so weight can be written as weight is equal to specific weight into volume so specific weight is defined as weight per unit volume so weight can be written as weight is specific weight into volume so what is the volume of this element volume of this fluid element is uh, this area into unit will gives us volume so area of triangle is half into base base is delta x into uh, delta z is height this is the area into b this gives us the volume so here we can write p2 into delta x into b minus p3 into lb cos theta minus half delta x delta z into b is equal to 0 and next p2 uh, p2 into delta x into b is equal to p3 into lb cos theta plus half delta x delta z into b so here b b gets cancelled and uh, what is remaining here p2 into delta x is equal to p3 l cos theta plus half into delta x into delta z sorry here there will be specific weight multiplied i have written only volume the specific weight into volume is weight so so divide it with delta x so p2 into delta x divided by delta x which is equal to p3 into l divided by delta x cos theta plus half into delta x into delta z specific weight divided by delta x 
so what is l by delta x l by delta x this is uh, l by delta x is second data so p2 is equal to p3 into l by delta x secant theta into cos theta plus half into w into delta z so now here p2 is equal to secant theta cos theta gets cancelled because secant theta is 1 by cos theta p3 plus half into w into delta z so if you look here If you see here, this is the fluid element, but we are considering the only point. We are not considering the element. We are considering only point, which means the point is infinitesimally small. So this fluid element can be converted to this is delta x and this is delta z. This fluid element can be converted into point when this delta x is zero and delta z is zero. We know that point is a uh, point has no dimension, no length, no breadth, no mass. So all the dimensions will be zero. So delta x tends to zero and delta z tends to zero. Here we have the quantity delta z. So as delta z tends to zero, the fluid element, fluid element becomes point. So this p2 is equal to p3. And we have got p1 is equal to p3 in our first derivation here p1 is equal to p3 and from here p2 is equal to p3 so p1 is equal to p2 is equal to p3 let us say that p and uh, this is valid for a point and not a not a surface valid for a point and for not a surface and this is also valid for fluids in fluids in rest and motion valid for fluids in rest and also in motion so this is how we can conclude that pressure at a point is same in all directions and from this uh, uh, from this statement pascal gave a law and uh, this pascal law can be used in different applications we will see that in the next video